Pedro from the MPREX. I'm here today with the incredible Axel Rudy Pell to talk about Diamonds and Lock 2 uh, was released back in July, July 30th on Steam Hammer. How's the things going with you? Oh, I'm perfectly fine. Thank you. And thanks for the great review, by the way. I loved it. I totally agree to everything you said. Oh, you just, oh, you just made my day. You really? Just, <laughs> we, don't, we don't even need to talk about anything anymore. You just, you just, okay. you just. Your own review. I'm perfect with that. No problem. <laughs> you, no. You, you, made, you absolutely made my day. Be, before we talk about this specific record, Diamonds Unlock Two, let me ask you this, because you have a lot of experience when it comes to covers. What makes it a good cover, in your opinion? A good cover is um, when you follow the same melody. You have to follow the lyrics, of course but you have to put it in your own style. If it fits, if the original fits perfectly to your style, then do something different to it, a little bit. But otherwise, you know, uh, just playing the cover like it, like the original is a little boring for me. So I have to add something special in there. I mentioned on my review that I felt like this was, uh, this record was a result of the pandemic. That if, if everything, if life was normal as we know it in the past, you would be too busy touring, perhaps releasing another album. This this record wouldn't see the light of the day, at least until maybe down the road. Uh, is that the case then? Yeah, you got it, baby, directly. Yes, straight ahead. Uh, uh, it's, it's really happened because of the pandemic. You know, we had to reschedule our tour from 2020 to 2021, then to 22. Uh, we're still not allowed to go inside and play rock and roll venues like uh, we did uh, two or three years ago, you know. We still have to wait till the pandemic will be over, unfortunately, you know. It's a little worse in Europe than in America, of course, you know, with restrictions still going on. So when, when you thought about releasing this covers album, how how much did we you already have in your back pocket that you were ready to put an album like this together? Or did you start from scratch? No, I didn't start from scratch, you know. I already made a list since the first cover record came out in 2007 i made a list every year and i said what about the next cover record what what song would i love to cover you know i made a big list there was a lot more a lot more songs on the list than we actually recorded you know i think it was over 25 or nearly 30 songs you know really but i, I put it away you know some some track was uh i don't know if you're familiar with that from a band from from greece uh i think they recorded that track at the beginning of the 70s or early 60s uh, it's called The Four Horsemen, and the band was called Aphrodite's Child, with a singer called Demis Roussos. He was a great Greek guy, huge guy, you know, but he has a very, very high voice, very high, like, a, or you knew, you knew, or was it the right word, you knew, you know, you know, you know the guy without the balls, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, and I had it on my list, I said, if I mention that song to my singer Johnny, he will kill me, who should sing that, you know, because it's so high. You can't do, you know, and I wanna, didn't want to have a different, so I put it away by myself on the list, you know. But actually, these songs which are on the list, everybody agreed to it, you know, apart from a few songs which the Americans didn't hear about. For example, Black Hat Woman by the Bank of Joy. They say, who the fuck is that? You know, never heard of it. Uh, can I say fuck or will it be? Yeah, you, can say, you can say whatever you want. This is, this is, today, this is your show. You can say whatever you want. Okay, this is my show. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LP show. Uh, let's start first. We have a nice, nice little. Oh no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was a, a, a democratic process when it came down to narrowing down to these specific tracks. You know, we ever the ARP was the, the, the long ARP exists. We've always been a very democratic band. We are talking so much um, and we're talking about everything till I'm right. <laughs> So we're not a democratic, but because it's my name on the record, if anything goes fair, you know, it's my my fair. You know, anyway, so uh, of course the others would say yes or no. I well, wouldn't do I wouldn't do a cover version of a track uh, if, if Bobby would have say, for example, Bobby Rondinelli would have said, no, no, I don't like it at all. Uh, can you think about it? You know, I wouldn't do that then. So because I'm always uh, listening to the other guys too, you know, of course, yeah. Uh, uh, these tracks that you picked, I felt that the beauty of them was that while being different songs, obviously, I mean, these are covers from different bands, not like you just covered one band and you went through their discography. You managed to make them in a way that they actually all fit together. They almost feel like they all came out part of one record. Is that the ARP DNA coming in and giving it its nice little touch? You get it, man. You get it. Exactly. Because, you know, I always like to cover a song, but it has to fit to our own ARP style, you know, if a song doesn't fit, I will make it fit, you know, like uh, She's a Lady by Tom Jones, you know, 
uh, uh, this song followed me from from the uh, early 70s on you know I always heard that song on the radio in the family then there was a big uh, I don't know uh, um, whatever big party or something they hear that song you know <laughs> still nowadays we turn on the the oldie radio uh, she's a lady you know it's always there and I said okay what makes it different half ballad and half punchy rock track you know and I tried it and um, the guys at first Johnny said to me are you really sure about she's a lady I, I can't I don't have it in my head. You're really sure? I said, listen till it's over, till the arrangement is done, and then you can say it again. If you don't like it, we won't do it. And as soon as you get the song, and you heard my pilot, my guiding vocals on the track, when the track was uh, um, done in the studio with all the other instruments, said, man, this is great. I love it. What did you do with that? That sounds awesome, you know? Yeah. Actually, it happens with every track. <laughs> Does having a vocalist like Johnny give you a little bit more freedom to be creative and really push that ARP sound and really extend these tracks and, and make them a little bit more of your own, not just a cover, but a little bit of your own song. Of course, definitely, because, you know, this this is my intention here, you know, to have every song, is it a cover or not, to sound like ARP. And uh, with, with Johnny, he's perfect on that, you know. I, I know exactly uh, uh, the key which Johnny, uh, uh, well, how can I say it, which Johnny doesn't like to sing in, in this special key, you know. And when I write, I'm ignoring that key because I know, you know, if there was a cover track, which is in that key, which Johnny didn't like, I'll change it to another key, you know, it actually works, you know, so this is great. Uh, was there a specific song uh, out of these that are that made to the record that even though you guys wanted it to be in the record and obviously it's there in the record, it was a little bit more difficult to get to the final stages? Um, let me think, um, no, not really, not really. I mean, it was there from the beginning, um, you know, the, the difference was uh, Bobby Roninelli recorded his drums over in the studio in New York with his own engineer. That was the only difference between a regular album and the cover album. You know, normally he's flying over, coming over to the German studio, setting up his drums. Uh, I mean, his technician setting up his drums because he's getting old. You know? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> No, you know, and then he starts playing and we go over track by track. But now I send him, he's a cover record, you know, he knows the tracks, you know. I send him YouTube links to listen to original again and whatever. I send him uh, my demo files, which I recorded at home with the right arrangement. And he played to that and he said, Axel, this is great. You know, of course, we phoned and we video chatted about the tracks, but everything was great. You know, that was the only difference. And uh, yeah, he loves it. <laughs> do, do you have a favorite on this record? Uh, and they are all my little children. If I would just pick one, the others will cry. Of so course, me... I think the intro, this is the phenomenal track because it's written by myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I was going to say, if, if you don't want to pick one, I'm going to throw uh, one out there. And I want to talk about a little bit about Painted Black. Yeah. Because you, you threw me for a loop there. I, I thought I knew where I was going with that song. And then suddenly you put on reverse and, and you back the car all, all the way into the garage. I was like, what's happening to me? Like. I thought I knew this song, but I've never heard this song in this format. How, how did it all come together? Uh, um, you know, uh, I always like the track, to be honest. You know, it's a classic rock track, probably one of the top 20 or top 25 tracks ever been written in the, out of the rock genre, you know. And actually, it was, I think it was way back in 1993 when I went to a show by the band Deep Purple. And I saw this band performing uh, Painting Black Live, but differently, you know, the only just a little from the original and then a long guitar solo a long keyboard solo but still with a groove behind i said wow and this impressed me very much it was the last tour with richie blackmore on guitar you know he's one of my top uh, three guitar players you know and i was very much influenced by him. i, I, I like it from from the beginning you know and i said to the guys when we ever do a cover version of that i would include uh, include this deep purple thing too but of course make it arp style you know the deep purple version has a solo of the guitar, but you're missing the backing guitars. You know, they have the keyboard, the guitar is only ding, 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 ding. and I want to have this, you know, this really the stone thing in the back, of course, and then adding these things, you know. And we tried it out, and everybody loves it, you know. Apart from a few others who say, ah, that's another fucking version, the original is the best, fuck you. Let's say, fuck you, motherfucker. Oh, of course, I won't know I'm not saying that, but anyway. I think at the end of the day, if you want to listen to the original, you can always go listen to the original. Nothing is stopping I anybody from doing that, but. I ask you as the first question, what makes a great cover? For me, a great cover is when you take the original song and you add your own DNA to it and you almost create a song that fits in your very own discography. 
So that right. if, if, if I'm introducing a song like Painted Black to my son, who perhaps has never heard the original, he'll yeah. think that, that this is your track, that this is your song. And I think that's exactly what you've done here. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. I can't say more than you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the, the, the whole beauty of this whole record is that you created a, a covers album that feels like an Axel Rudy Pell album. It doesn't yes. feel like a covers album. You got it. You can listen from, from, from the top to, to the end. You can listen to it in one row and you think, is it really a cover record? Some of the melodies are really familiar, right? Or is it an ARP record? No, because there's cover songs, you know. But you're right, absolutely, I totally agree. Uh, when, you're putting these, yeah, when you're putting these tracks together, the soundscape unifies the songs. We, 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 we see that that same way. But did you take a little bit of extra work in terms of the track listing, the order that you wanted to put it together? Because I felt like that also helped the playability of the album. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's a totally psychological thing to put all the songs in the right direction. You know, I can't start with a ballad, you know, I can't start with Room with a View, the Tony Carey track at the, at the, at the beginning, you know. So it, for me, it was always clear that there's only one way to rock, which would be the opener of the album, because it's a fast track, it's an energetic track, and let the others follow, you know. And for me, it was absolutely clear that Eagle by ABBA is in the end, because of the long outro. If you have a long outro song, the, the atmospheric things are happening, guitar, blah, 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 one end thing. You couldn't put that in the middle. Other people would say, oh, that's take a long time till the next song starts, you know? So it has to be clear that it should be the end, you know? So, yeah. Uh, what do you personally get out of doing a covers album that perhaps you don't get uh, when you're doing your own material, your own record? Is, that, is there something specifically that, that scratches that itch? Um... Uh, Maybe I listen more to the original text then. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's nothing really special, no. no. So now that you have this album behind you and you're looking forward, when can we expect some new material from you? At the moment, I'm still doing interviews, like now, but I'm still in the writing process for the next really studio album. So I think uh, I talked to the record company and we agreed that I should be, we should be back in the studio around December, January, creating the new studio album, which will be out hopefully next spring. And I, don't ask me about titles. I don't have anything so far. So, uh, yeah. A total work in progress. Sorry? A total work in progress. You're still working yes, on, the, on everything. Yeah. To be well, honest, Axel, well. thank you very much for your time today, man. This was an absolute pleasure. And the fact that you started off this interview by telling me how good I did on my review, you made my day. So I, I, I from the bottom so of my heart, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. You know what I did? Uh, I put a YouTube link on in our uh, ARP chat group, you know, and everybody loved it. And Johnny said, but this guy has to clean his counter. There's too much things going on there. <laughs> Sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I get that a lot. I get he's not the only one. I, I, I'm, okay. I'm a little bit messy, so I do get a lot. I, tell him that next time that you guys release a full length record, I'll have him on the channel and I'll clean it up. Thank you so much, sir. That's great. <laughs> Take care. Okay. All the best. Thank you, Pedro. Thanks. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.